Hey y'all, welcome back to another roundup. And now that 2024 is well and underway, man, have we been getting a lot of solid stuff lately. I've been a lot more on an albums and singles kick lately, and I hope to get the next album spotlight bit out to y'all within the next month. Regardless, yeah, there were a lot of groovy songs that dropped in May as well, and I'm so excited to show some of them off. So anyway, here we are once again with my latest selection of tracks and singles from May 2024. Your head gets heavy rests on my shoulder cause you drink too much whiskey when you're starting off with something on the classier side of the pond so Aruj Aftab is a Pakistani American singer songwriter who I first discovered last year through a collaboration project since then though her newest music has been slipping into my radar this year and I've really enjoyed what I heard so far I was always aware of her vast potential but whiskey only solidifies this for me it's just exquisite with an atmosphere led by plaintive guitar strums barely their percussion and Aftab's smooth jazzy vocals it's an absolutely dreamy and wistful little tune the lilting pull of its environment defined by its weightlessness, almost formlessness that nonetheless stays very focused in its romantic melancholy. It's such a calming tune, and with her soft singing, Aftab matches this low-key energy so wonderfully. Can't say it's for everyone, as I'm sure the sparseness of the sound might be underwhelming for those who want a little more substance, but honestly, it's this vast smoky openness that really defines its strengths. It's a good sign of more to come from this artist, and I'll definitely be checking out that album soon. Continuing on a similar trajectory as the last one, we now have the latest from chamber folk artist Martha Sky Murphy in anticipation for her upcoming record. A lot of her music tends to navigate along the same flavors of piano-driven, slightly avant-garde art pop, which is as intriguing as it is tough to crack into. Nonetheless, Pick Yourself Up might be the first of her songs that has really got me paying attention. Instead of the abstract cloudiness with which she tends to surround herself, the instrumental elements are spikier, stabbing string arpeggios and mechanical synth embellishments building upon each other little by little. The the atmosphere is lush and psychedelic, but also a little bit scary? There's just something that's mildly unsettling about this one in particular, but in a way that has me ever eager to keep listening and peel back the layers of roughness. And beneath this, we have a really gorgeous core, heard within the grand orchestral arrangement and the wildly varied vocal performance of Murphy herself. It is, again, a bit of a tough shell to crack, but if you're like me and are always looking for music that challenges any modes of comfortable listening you find yourself in, well, this might be for you. Okay, now it's time for something truly special. If Akushi Asagawa is a name that sounds familiar, well, I've covered their brilliantly erratic single Look At Me way back in my 6 subscriber special. It's well proven to me that this artist has their finger on the pulse of their own really charming flavor of jazzy glitch pop so unique to them. And yet, boy's texture is a little different. The fiery percussion and extravagant energy I've known them for is now replaced with gentle guitar strums and a generally more organic atmosphere punctuated by their signature soft singing. I mean, it's still quirky as hell hell, especially with these wild vocal samples and all the loony turns the track embarks upon. But it's also a fantastic balance between these earthy textures and its more youthful slants, like an ode to the untethered vibrancy of the fiery passion residing in each and every one of us. It's an extremely pretty sound, and in its own abstract way, also one of the most personally gender euphoric tracks I've heard all year long. Point is, this rocks so hard, and I'm absolutely buzzing with anticipation for this upcoming album. Thank you. Oh, it's these guys again. So coming off their very successful 2023 with one of the very best albums released that year, Korean shoegaze masters Paranol have now released something new and well, okay, I'll use the space to elaborate on something. I've mentioned in the past that I don't really care about mixing in the music I listen to, and I fear that this might have come across as me devaluing the work of producers and engineers who make the music sound the way it does. It's more so that I hardly ever see unusual mixing decisions as a huge drawback, something to notch down a point, so to speak. The way I see it, no production decision is ever intended for specifically me to enjoy, and I don't want to just wave off whatever mixing choices an artist makes for their song just because it's not to my own personal taste. Such things are, more likely than not, done with some end purpose in mind, and I see it as a goal of mine to figure out what that purpose is. Which is to say that my knee-jerk reaction to Gold River is that it sounds bad. The walls of sound, once lush and intricate, are now cranked up past the point of good taste, registering as formless noise along the otherwise really gorgeous twinkling melodies. It's a bit of an ear sore.
before, and yet, having now listened to the song a few times, I really can't imagine it sounding any differently. It really stands apart from Paranol's lusher, cleaner material, and I see it as a band experimenting with some new textures besides a heavily orchestrated sound they've been known for. It's a bit of a rudimentary change, sure, but if this is a sign of some more such experimentations in the future, well, I'll go ahead and keep an open mind for whatever comes next. If you watch my videos of the best songs of 2023, you might recall this name appearing pretty high up there. Yes, Prescription is still absolutely peak, but Remy Wolf as a whole is also just so cool. She's been slowly easing up to a new album this year, and I was really close to featuring Toro in this video. That one is such an excellent slice of summery, sunshiny goodness. Even so though, this one just knocks me off my feet. It's a fine, breezy track in the slacker rock vein, with a slightly nostalgic electronic wave and unique snapshot storytelling detailing Remy Wolf's poignant memories of Miami with a loved one. I've been checking out some of her earlier material lately, and as much as I've really enjoyed her style back then, it's actually so cool to see how mature and focused her latest work has gotten, while never sacrificing the optimistic, free-spirited personality she always instills in her music. Not to mention that her broad and powerful vocals are also used to great ends here. The high points in the song also remind me a whole lot of Prescription's most powerful moments, which to me is a huge plus. Certainly the sign of someone I'll continue to keep my eye on. Last year, I discovered the synth-punk band MS Paint, and having spun their album a few times now, I'm coming to realize that this essentially fills in that void of aggressive rock with a hip-hop edge I could never comfortably find with new metal staples like Korn and Limp Bizkit. And, well, time to throw another artist into that void. I decided to check out New York's Lip Critic debut album this month on a pure whim, and, well, it's very cool. I'll talk in full about it later, but Love Will Redeem You might be one of the best sample slices you'll get from this one. From its wild booming synth rhythms to its feverish percussion and the totally erratic delivery by its vocalist, it's one hell of a ride for sure. And the use of their warped and twisted vocal samples are just as deranged, giving the whole track a strangely surreal feel alongside its obvious roughness. The album as a whole does a better job at defining the sound into something more fleshed out and varied, even if the standalone track feels like little more than a rough and quick burst of wild energy. Sometimes though, that's exactly what I really need. I've only just discovered Toronto Project Respire this month, and seeing that their 2020 album Herith is so well regarded among the hardcore crowd, I've definitely got some back catalog work to get to. And it's only because Distant Light of Belonging, the lead singer for their upcoming album, is so damn cool that I've gotten so interested. As lovely as I believe this track to be, yeah, I can imagine those of y'all not into this rougher stuff to be quite as impressed. What really got me intrigued about this one though is how multidimensional the texture of the sound is. Sure, there's a flat fuzzy sheet of their guitar and vocals combo that reads very much in the black gaze vein, but then the melodies that pop into frame also feel very post-hardcore in its anguished energy, and that's even before we get to the warm punctuation of horns and strings, which bring a much more grounded feel to the track overall. And seeing that this new album seems to cover themes of personal displacement and the everlong search for one's duty in this world, well, I'm absolutely looking forward to more of this deep emotional resonance. You can absolutely bet on it. Closing things off with the latest single from out pop project Mike Snow, which is something I never thought I'd get to say on this channel. I know this band mostly for their brief blip of relevancy in the late aughts. Animal, Song for No One, Black and Blue, all bops. I Was a Sailor is their first single released in about seven years and proved that they still got it in them. Even still, this is a bit of a different turn from the group. Their signature stagnant, though earwormy production styles replaced with more fluid motions and melody and instrumentation. Now that they are less steeped in the coldness of the late aughts indie scene, they can fully spread their wings into some lighter, even soulful material, and I think they wear the sound well. And yet, the coldness remains, this time repurposed in a slinky piano melody, doubled by the inclusion of a children's choir that gives us one of the most instantly ear-grabbing melodies of the year. It's slick, catchy, and just a little bit surreal, which sounds like a true recipe for goodness if I've ever heard it. As I said, this is a comeback that I can't say I was ever expecting, but sure, yes, let's welcome Mike Snow back into the fold. It's clear that they've got so much left to say, and I'm ready to hear it.
And that's all for this month. As I said, pretty loaded, and that's not even mentioning all the cuts I had to make. Leave a comment letting me know of any thoughts you have about these or anything else you discovered in May. As always, take care, and I'll see you next time. For your